about this one recording because you know memory is cheap and you know, this the only thing is where do I put this mic I'm gonna have two lapel mics at this rate that's probably for the best so Kerbal is incredibly accessible. You can build your rocket and watch it fly off and explode and you can enjoy the experience. And that's the thing, a lot of education is predicated on learning something before you can do something. Whereas Kerbal lets you do something and then learn something as a consequence. And so it very quickly let people develop skills which they could then see translated to you know, actual academic work. Uh, so I think it's basically a gateway drug to physics. People who have a, a curiosity about space exploration only have passive ways of interacting with that interest, right? It's YouTube videos, it's documentaries. This is a way for them to experience these concepts firsthand. I would really love to bring in a broad range of, of just people of all ages who have even just a passing interest in rocketry or just games where you build stuff and you're creative. And I'm all for like, hey, if you just wanna like put a bunch of fuel tanks on thing and just light it up and crash it into something, watch the pretty explosion, like that's cool too. There's nothing about Kerbal Space Program that should stop anybody from enjoying it if they are enthusiastic about simulation games or the idea of space and space travel or being able to build cool stuff. It's important for us to get approachability right so that instead of trying this experience because of whatever it is that brought you to it and sort of feeling that you are being stopped from finding your enjoyment, that we're helping you into that experience. Playing KSP-1 sometimes feels like you're trying to climb Mount Everest in your street clothes. KSP-2 sort of adds Sherpas and base camps. It's still the same tall mountain. It's still an insane challenge, but we're at least equipping you for success. Kerbal Space Program is a very easy game to start because you can literally slap a couple of parts together go to the launch pad and press a button so the mechanics of it are not hard. What is challenging is to decide that you want to do a goal that's out in the solar system somewhere and then figure out what it's going to take to get there. I'm most interested in people understanding concepts like the length of time it takes to travel from one place to another, the challenges in launching things into space and understanding how gravity works, how, how orbits work. Realistic space travel is stranger than most science fiction that we encounter. And there aren't too many video games that actually approach this topic as well. So this is a rather uh, unexplored area for uh, user experience. I love flying. I love building planes in KSP-1. I love, you know, high altitude planes or really acrobatic planes. But building planes, specifically building wings in KSP-1, the ways that wings attach is super not intuitive. Whereas you'd be like, I just want the wing to attach at the, you know, at the short part, so I just make the wing bigger. That simple action is really, really frustrating in KSP-1. And so we're looking at experiences like that. We want less of just add a button to do it for me and more make the buttons that do exist easier to understand and easier to use. We now have several different procedural wings to choose from. These allow you to adjust the shape and size of the wings, and they also include stabilizers and control surfaces. This new capability is paired with the new VAB overlays that show the effects of those changes. So you'll see lift effects, drag effects, mass effects. Because there's so much you can do in this game, um, it's like, you know, the, the question is like, how do, you, how do you present that to someone that doesn't know anything about rocket science. They feel, they feel dumb. But really, it's, it's the failure of the UX. So one of the first things you'll notice has changed when you come into the new VAB is that parts are sorted in a slightly different way than they were in the original game. You're able to work on multiple sub-assemblies in parallel to one another. We have this orthographic view cube. It's much easier to do things like line up a fin or line up a booster on a radial decoupler. That's a thing that was kind of legendarily difficult to deal with in the original game, but everything's nice and clean in this presentation. When I played the first one, 
I, uh, I just, I just hit a wall. I never got to the Mun in KSP1. I had to watch Scott Manley do it. With KSP2, the first time I got through it was, I think, like day two, when we were, I was onboarding still, getting comfortable with the team and kind of learning the new tutorial. And uh, we got there so much quicker. The way I got through it was having my friend, who was very, very knowledgeable and dedicated to the game and to science and space in general, having him hold my hand and, and do that flight with me was what got me through. And so these tutorials are meant to sort of be that for people, to be that buddy that is riding with you. We're not all going to have an expert sitting there with us while we're playing the game. And so having something be usable to the extent that it's like having somebody sitting next to you, it's like Johanna sitting next to you, that's really the goal when it comes to approachability with Kerbal Space Program. In the first weeks of the project, I started making a paper version of our new tutorial. Uh, and that relies much more heavily on visual information. It relies much more heavily on showing rather than telling. Everyone's heard the word orbit. Everyone knows satellites go around the Earth. But there's actually some other things about an orbit that are not intuitive until you see them illustrated in an animation. The goal of tutorials is to introduce concepts to the players in a fun, casual way, in a way that doesn't feel like hitting you over the head with instruction or a textbook. So the current plan is for, for it to be as unobtrusive as possible. Like you opt in to watching the tutorials. Like you don't have to, it's sort of a reference for you where, you know, if, if you're stuck, it's ever present for you to like refer to. So like, what is an orbit? And there's like a playlist of lessons, basically. And so this one will play right before you get to go into orbit for the first time. After I've drawn the storyboards for the script and cut it together into an animatic, I usually show the, the entire team. And that also includes the studio head's daughter, um, who's four years old, and he loves to send me her feedback about it, whether she learned anything, how many times she watched it, she can't wait till the next one comes out. And that's always great feedback to hear. I needed the kind of educational tools that appealed to me, things that'll make me remember things. So pictures, funny pictures with words, sort of subtle bits of comedy. Like that's, that's what makes the lesson stick. One of the most fun things about designing these tutorials with Raph is that We've had to kind of come up with interesting visual metaphors for some fairly complicated processes. And then we came up with this idea of there being essentially these two engine concepts embodied in two Kerbals, one of whom is this big, buff, like weightlifting looking Kerbal, and the other one is this little skinny fella. And Across multiple tutorials, we use these two characters to illustrate concepts like shedding spent fuel stages. As soon as we sort of began thinking of these things in terms of these two guys working together, we found that people were picking up the concept faster because it was presented in an unintimidating way. It conveys the idea so perfectly that you need something really strong to get you up that hill, but then to go the distance, you need something that's really efficient and light. And that imagery is, is so perfect. I think the community are gonna love those two characters. We're teaching you the core concepts you need to be able to invent a rocket that can achieve that goal. And it's really, really important for us to, to preserve the distinction between those two ways of learning, right? You're not learning by rote, you're learning by doing. We could get an entire generation of people like stoked about space, right? I've told people that I'm working on the most meaningful thing I am ever going to work on in my career. If we can build this experience that is not only entertaining and a, a fairly technically accurate sim and is funny and irreverent uh, and gives people a taste of, oh, you could spend your life exploring these things or you could have a career doing things like this. I think that opens up doors for so many people who otherwise wouldn't even be aware that this is a possibility.